What do you think is the biggest fear of your medical career going ahead? Have I taken a wrong decision of choosing MBBS as a career? If is there a real problem? What are the solutions where we as a country, as a community, as a whole? In the next five years, they're going to add extra 75,000 seats of MBBS. A couple of weeks back, we selected 50 interns randomly from all the colleges from throughout the country and we sent out forms. Different questions, different scenarios, but there's one question that is consistent to all 50 of them. What do you think is the biggest fear of your medical career going ahead? Obviously, one of the expected answers was need PG exam, but there was distressing answers all throughout. Sprinkled throughout them, there are multiple answers like, have I taken a wrong decision of choosing MBBS as a career? Is MBBS really worth it? Will I be able to make a good living out of it? Will I ever be able to have a work-life balance where I can de definitely do the job which I was passionate about to choose and also have a personal life on my own? These answers were really, really distressing. And here I am here with you to discuss an open conversation, an open debate. Let's fight ourselves out in the comment section and see if MBB is really worth it. Why did we come to the situation? If, if, is there a real problem? What are the solutions where we as a country, as a community, as a whole can overcome it? If you're first time here, click on the subscribe button. And I'm Dr. Anjan. Well, let's discuss about pathology and medicine as a whole. Let's come back to the main problem. Is MBB is really worth it? If you've asked this question a decade back, I'd have, told, I'd have told with betting my life on it, yes, it's worth it. Because the way I saw my uncle became an amazing clinician and the amount of respect, amount of uh, aura what we had when he walked into a place was amazing. That's what pulled me into medicine. That's what must have pulled most of us into medicine, right? The passion what we had or some inspiration looking at the person. Is it there as of now? I would say yes, it's there in quite a few of you. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to be like Met Twitter, so bullish saying that it's not worth it. It's definitely worth it on a very long term. It's a very, very long term thing. It's not something which I'll get an immediate gratification. When it hit me hard was, a couple of months back, I was talking to a student and said that, sir, I'm working in an insurance agency which process claims for an abroad insurance company. In my entire flow, there are close to 100 medical graduates sitting and just processing claims. And most of them are sitting there because they are not able to get the salary in a hospital what they are paying. That hit me hard. A desk job is able to pay a doctor more than what he or she has learned for. My country has failed. You guys, the general public has failed to kind of, kind of kill a dream of a person and to make him or her sit behind a desk and type the computers. Why did we come here? The answer to it is very, very simple. It's blunt and open. Whether you agree or not, we are producing more doctors than we require. If you're a general public, obviously you'll comment on various things below. I'll definitely come back to that at the end of the video. As per the WHO standards, we have a certain doctor to patient ratio. In quite a few places in our country, the doctor to patient ratio is more or less nearby. And obviously in the next five to 10 years, most of the places in our country will have the adequate doctor to patient ratio as prescribed by WHO. But what is my country doing? In the past few years, the number of colleges they are opening are humongous, both the government as well as the private. It's also said that in the next five years, they're going to add extra 75,000 seats of MBBS. To put things into perspective, as of now, we have 1.1 lakh MBBS students, 20, 30,000 people from abroad get qualified every year, and we have alternative medicine, dentists and everything. All of them I'm taking under the perspective of doctors. So even if we remove them, we take only MBBS graduates. In the next six or seven years, my country will be producing close to two lakh MBBS passouts every year. Two lakhs. Is there enough job for two lakh MBBS doctors in my country? The answer straightforward is no. We don't have enough healthcare infrastructure to absorb two lakh fresh MBBS doctors coming out who are passing out and coming out into the healthcare community. We are not able to provide it as of now. Will my country improve my healthcare infrastructure? Only time will answer for that. Then why are we doing this? Are we just doing this just to rub the political aims of the country and the nation? Are we just doing this just to make sure the old bank is satisfied? Still, there are hues and cries that the government hospital are understaffed. Why are we not doing that? Why are we not taking care of that? Why are we not having per permanent employments and permanent recruitments for doctors waiting in queue for every interview which is being posted by the government? These are questions which are going unanswered. But these are the real questions you have to ask. This isn't one problem, one side where we have been squeezed, where the end MBBS doctors have been squeezed, literally being squeezed by more and more and more and more supply with diminishing demand ever. The second problem here is the work style. 
and it's become very very hectic. You must have definitely seen at least one violence happening in the country every week against doctors. What's the nation doing? What's the law doing? They have to support the doctors. Fortunately or unfortunately, we are the pillars of the healthcare. We are the person who struggled a lot to increase your life expectancy to 40 to 80 and maybe even more in future. You want a healthy life? Doctors should be healthy for that. We have to be healthy for that. And for this, not just the government, a uh, please an appeal to the general public. We increase in GDP, we increase in education, we increase in learning. Please, we have to increase in civic sense. Don't expect an immediate cure because a bald-headed person told that you rub this on ins uh, your head on Instagram and hair will grow. Don't trust them. Trust your dermatologist. Everything which is successful will take time. Medicine and healing will also take time, except for few illnesses. So what is the solution for this? Obviously, there's a set problem. Yes, MBBS as on date, if I say, I would have to think twice or thrice to say, is it really worth it or not? But yes, in long term, it might be beneficial. But is a struggle worth it? I, I should not be the person saying that you should struggle. It should be a personal choice. But what is the solution for this? There are a few couple of things which comes to my mind to cater for a solution, but definitely there should be government intervention. One biggest thing what I feel is, we are not innovating in healthcare. We don't have a research department in every medical college. If you go to any first world country, the research department is equivalent or if not more than the clinical department. So there are opportunities available for them. But my country is not developing that. My country should invest more on the healthcare research and innovation so that we can absorb the young, talented, bright medical doctors and innovate and be the leaders of healthcare rather than adapting to innovations. Obviously, government has to pitch in for this. Second, government has to put a very strong rule of against healthcare influences, who is kind of destroying the perception of health that okay, I do this, this will happen. No, it will not happen. Just because you stick an Indian flag here and if you're old and talk about proteins without a background, I'm not going to trust you. This amount of false information has to be cut very, very harshly by the government, and the right information from the doctors has to reach the people so that the people will know what to expect about the health. That's very, very important as well. And the third, an appeal to all the MBBS graduates, try to make yourselves not just like a fast looking into one particular direction. Please go and travel the paths less traveled. Try entrepreneurship, try civil service, try MBA, try hospital management, get into research, go outside if required. Because I am always here for doctors. Whatever said and done, you have Past the journey of NEET UG, MBBS, NEET PG, and you are a fresh doctor with teeming potential. I don't want the potential to be killed in a fight. Explore. Just don't be restricted to a cocoon. Because you are capable of flying, and I want you guys to fly. That's my advice to my young medicos, and I foresee that at some point of time in the next decade, we will also have a sharp decline like an average engineering graduate had in the last decade but I hope it will not happen and I hope my country will be able to absorb all the young bright medicals and I hope we will be the future pillars of healthcare of the nation and also the world. If you have any comments below put in the comment section and let's make sure let's have a fruitful or a heated discussion but with a definitive outcome. See you soon. Bye bye.